Hello, I'm Nancy Kelleher, and this is News 6. This week's program was prepared by students of St. Peter and Paul School in Ottawa, Ohio. Ottawa was founded in 1861 and was named after the Ottawa Indian tribe which lived in the area. Presently, Ottawa is the site of several thriving industries, including Sylvania, Weather Seal, Pow Pack, and a sugar beet plant. The town is always growing and changing. The most recent changes include the planning of the time capsule outside the courthouse, and the addition to the library, and the grand renewal of Main Street of town. The changes also mean the end of an age with the tearing down of, ho of the Hollywood Theater to make room for the brand new home and savings building. Two members of our class had a chance to talk with Greek immigrant Theodore Chiefus, who had owned the Hollywood Theater for over 37 years. Mr. Chiefus, a very religious man, explained why he had stopped showing movies. I had to stop in 1969 because the pictures were getting to be very immoral for women and children especially, and I was ashamed of the Lord to do that, to continue with pictures. See, my conscience bothered me so much. But I did have a, a, a free Christmas show for children every year with the cooperation of the merchants of Ottawa. But during the summertime, since 1969, I had um, I was showing Spanish talking pictures for the migrants that we have here every summer. Mr. Chiefus is also known for his donation of a park to the city of Ottawa. The park known as Our Lord's Park has a large concrete cross. Beth Hovis and Dave Fortman asked him wh why he gave the city the park. I owe so much to our Lord Jesus so much you have no idea. You might say, well, don't all of us owe? Yes, but I still owe more than that. He also said that the park was to thank the people of Ottawa. We want to thank Mr. Chiefus as well as Beth and Dave for their interview. And now for news about a special week for the students of our school, here's Steve Dunn. Thank you, Nancy. During the last week in April, all the sixth grade went to Brown's High Hope Outdoor Education Camp. Though the price was $52.50, most of us only had to pay $25 because the parents had formed a committee to help raise money for the trip to camp. These parents, along with some of the students, worked on projects such as dinner of chicken or Swiss steak at the Twisted Rail restaurant that served over 600 people, three bake sales, family pictures, a communion breakfast, and dance lessons. These projects made it possible for the students to find out about nature. To do this at camp, we, all, we had all types of classes where we learned about compasses, animals, and plants. At the camp, there are animals such as goats, lambs, rabbits, and horses, as well as animals that live in the forest. We had a chance to study their footprints and their habitats. We studied plants we found out about the trillium, a pretty white flower with three petals and three leaves found in the forest. The plant is protected by a $100 fine if it is picked. We also found out about the jack in the pulpit and blood root. The counselors had us participating in such things as the gravel pit where we tried to find fossils and some of us did. We also went on a field trip where we went to a dairy farm, a fish hatchery, and a sawmill. But the camp was more than just classes. We had campfires and hayrides and things like teacher hunts. On the second night that we were there, the teachers hid and we went out to find them. Some were in a boat and some snuck back to camp. We also learned the legend of the Marsh Man. It seemed that a man who has a scarred face lives in the woods close to the camp. And when it hears kids, he goes after them. Though it is rumored that he is just a figment of the camp staff's imagination. By the end of the week, Marsh Man or not, we had a last campfire where we toasted marshmallows and joined hands to sing songs. But there are also lots of things going on at school. Here's Pat Limpack to tell you about them. Thank you, Steve. This year, St. Peter and Paul School held a carnival in the auditorium. Admission was free, but to do anything at the carnival, you had to buy five cent tickets. We had games for everyone, young and old. The games included shoot the owl, a fish pond, ring toss, down the hill, and spoil the milk. The City of Ottawa and many members of our class have hobbies. Everything from Lee Havenberg, a local man who makes doll furniture,
to a member of their eighth grade at our school who collects animal skulls. Recently, several of our students were able to show off their hobbies in a talent show for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Forty-five students participated from the four grades with a variety of talents, which include singers, dancing, and playing musical instruments. For example, two sixth graders, Shelley Nordhaus and Robin Osting, did a clown dance. Chris Evesmeyer is a sixth grade gymnast who's been working at it since she was six. She has competed in meets in Decatur, Indiana, and Lima and Toledo, Ohio. Her best event is a balance beam, which she once received an 8.75. Sharon Newman, another sixth grader, has won many awards for her baton work. She has over 80 trophies and 13 medals, which she has won. She started with a baton when she was five. She plans to enter many more contests. Now with more news from the school, here's Jill Shoemaker. Thank you, Pat. Last month, the sixth grade planted some trees behind the convent. These included green ash, sugar maple, sycamore, and sweet gum. But the most interesting part of the story was how the water got to these trees. Everyone stands in a line from the faucet outside the convent down to the trees. Then we pass buckets of water from person to person till they reach the trees. Runners then bring the buckets back to the faucet. Th this procedure was also done to the tree that was planted 47 years ago during 1930, the bicentennial of George Washington's birthday. Held two years later, inspired by a ceremony which said that the tree would be dedicated to the ideal of the first present. Since then, the tree has been known as the George Washington tree. Last winter, the local high school had a dynamite basketball team. Under the coaching of Ron Niekamp, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans went to the state final. With the team consisted of Brian Dickey, Al Aventaugh, Greg Smithbush, and Big Joe Moss, as well as the NWBL Player of the Year, Ken Pottis. It was no wonder they went all the way to the state finals. We asked the coach, what was the future for the team? Well, we, uh, we lose uh, some really good basketball players from our team this year, but we have some outstanding basketball players coming back, Joe Moss included, and uh, Dan Beckett, uh, Rick Pottest, and Al Miller, and not to mention some other players with some JV players. So uh, we feel like that uh, the future here out of Glendorf in basketball is very good. We want to thank Mr. Ge Niekamp for the information. Now back to Nancy for the editorial. Thank you, Jill. Recently, our school board took the question of uniforms for the students. The majority of students were against it, but the vote of the students didn't carry enough weight, so questionnaires were sent out to the parents. Mr. Paul Dixon, the school principal, tells what happened. The questionnaire was sent to the parents of next year's school children. It was a yes or no type questionnaire. Yes, they wanted to have uniforms for children next year, or no. The results were three to one against uniforms, so therefore, it was decided that we wouldn't have uniforms. We would like to thank the school board, our administrators, and especially our parents for cooperating in this problem. This wraps it up for the students and teachers of St. Peter and Paul School in Ottawa, Ohio. Have a good day.